These are the notes for Unit 2, Day 11, and they start on page 31 of your note sheet, uh, packet. And um, we we're kind of circling back to uh, trigonometric functions to kind of close out the unit. Not to be punny, but it's a good trig joke. Anyway, um, so we, diff uh, we um, did an inquiry activity to find the derivatives of sine and cosine. And then I told you for the other four trig functions to just copy them out of your text. And so we're going to look at those a little more closely now and actually derive the um, definitions for the derivative for those functions. So um, the activity then is to use the quotient rule and the rational identities for the other four functions, tan, cotangent, secant, and cosecant, to verify the derivatives for the four trigonometric functions. So in other words, um, when we say uh, the rational identities, we're talking about things like this. Tangent of X can be rewritten as sine over cosine of X. And that is a rational, in other words, a fraction, um, and uh, a rational expression. And um, if we have a rational expression or a fraction, we know that we can differentiate it using the quotient rule. So um, we're going to look at this as u and v. And I, I see that a lot of you have been using this organizer. I think it's a pretty effective one. Um, and if you haven't used this order organizer, go back to the quotient rule uh, day in Blackboard. And um, there is an explanation of this organizer. Um, and it was uh, contributed a couple years ago by a student of mine named Jace. So um, anyway, so we will call the top one U and the bottom one V. High and low is what we call them in class. And so U is sine and V is cosine. And now we need the derivatives of each. So derivative of U, U prime is cosine of X. Derivative of V or V prime is minus sine of X. And then we can do the uh, the quotient rule. So the derivative of the tangent, then using the quotient rule, we're going to have that as low d high minus high d low, right? So low is v, so cosine d high is times another cosine minus high, which is the sine of x, d low, which is negative sine of x. So notice I'm using brackets because they were multiplying by a negative derivative there all over low squared, so cosine squared. Um, and then I'm going to simplify this. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Sine times sine is sine squared. We have a negative and a negative here. I'll multiply it together. So opposite of negative is a positive. It's a lot going on in that numerator. So that numerator ends up being cosine squared x plus sine squared x. The denominator, as you know, we don't typically um, do anything with the denominator. We just bring it along. That's cosine squared x. And now we're going to use our, our uh, trig identities. We know from our flip book that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So this whole fraction can be rewritten as 1 over cosine squared x. And that's like saying 1 over cosine times 1 over cosine. And we know that the 1 over the cosine, or in some people will call it the reciprocal of the cosine, we know that that is the secant. So 1 over cosine squared is just secant squared x. And so that is the derivative of the tangent of x is a secant squared x. So this bottom part is what you um, copied out of your textbook back when we were talking about derivatives of sines and cosines. Um, and now you can see we can actually derive it using the quotient rule. So let's take a look at the cotangent. Its rational identity is 1 over sine, or excuse me, cotangent, is cosine over x over sine of x. And go ahead and name it U and V. And go ahead and stop the video and try this one on your own to see if you can get the derivative of cotangent as it looks in your textbook. Um, okay, if you're tuning back in, we're going to go through that derivation now. Hopefully, you've tried it on your own. But again, we have uh, U is cosine, V is sine, derivative of U is negative sine, derivative of V is cosine. And we can now do the quotient rule. So low d high is going to be sine of x times negative sine of x. Minus high d low is going to be minus cosine times cosine all over low squared. So all over sine squared x. And then simplifying like we did before, 
we've got negative sine x minus squared x, excuse me, minus cosine squared x in the numerator. And then we have sine squared x in the denominator. And so if we compare and contrast these two expressions from the last and the, pre, and the current one, um, if cosine squared x plus sine squared x is one, the minus cosine squared x minus sine squared x has got to be negative one. In other words, we can factor out a negative one. So this ends up being negative one over sine squared x. And we know that uh, we're gonna bring the negative out front because we know all our co-functions have negative derivatives, right? Um, so we're gonna bring the negative out front and one over sine is cosecant. So this ends up being negative cosecant squared x and that's where the derivative of cotangent is. Okay, so let's set up the rational identity for secant. It is one over the cosine. Let's set up our u and our v and go ahead and try this one on your own and pause the video. Okay, if you're tuning back in, I'm assuming you've, uh, you've tried this on your own using the quotient rule. Uh, so the u is the top, that's just one. And v is the bottom, uh, that's cosine. And so the derivative of u, u prime is zero, right? That's what the derivative of a constant is. Derivative of v is minus sine. And now we can use our quotient rule. So low d high is cosine times zero. Minus high d low, it's gonna be minus one times negative sine x all over low squared. So cosine x times zero is just zero. So we're left with this part of the numerator, which is positive because we have minus a negative. So we have sine of x over cosine squared of x. And I'm gonna split this. I'm gonna call this sine of x over cosine x times one over cosine x because those are using those rational identities again for trig functions. So the first rational identity is tangent and the next one is secant. So this ends up being tangent of x times secant of x. And that is the derivative then of the secant of x. Um, okay, let's set up this last one. We have cosecant of x and the rational identity for cosecant of x is one over sine of x. Let's call that u and v. Go ahead and set up uh, the organizer and use the quotient rule to find this derivative. Okay, so u is one, that's the numerator. v is the denominator, that's sine x. u prime is zero, just like before, same numerator, right? v prime is cosine x. Okay, setting up that quotient rule then, low d high is sine of x times zero minus high d low minus one cosine x times cosine x divided by low squared sine of x squared and again we get sine of x times zero that first portion of the numerator is zero again and the second portion is minus cosine x so we have minus cosine x over sine squared x and this is all the similar strategies we're using um, from the previous uh, derivations and I'm going to split this up, but just like I split it up over in the previous one for secant. So in this case, it's going to be, I'm going to bring the minus out front because we know all our cofunctions have negative derivatives. And I have cosine over sine, and then I have one over sine. And then we know cosine over sine is cotangent. We know one over sine is cosecant. And um, so we have negative cotangent cosecant x for our derivative for the cosecant of x. So if you check those out with what's in the book or what you were jotted down in your notes way back in the uh, sine and cosine section uh, for that day, you'll see that all of those match. And um, and if the derivations aren't important, you know, the end result is we want to be able to use these derivatives, um, but it's kind of nice to know where they come from. And it's kind of nice to see that you can actually derive them on your own. And uh, we'll go through the takeaways when we get back into class.